Hi, Sally Walker here, your hormone and slow age expert. So let's talk about the menstrual cycle. Now, this is something which all women go through at one point in their life, absolutely. Um, and what could be more important than learning to understand your menstrual cycle? And this is something which I believe should be taught in much greater detail in school so the young girls have a chance of understanding what's going on through those approximately 28 days. Hmm. So anyway, let's have a little look at it. So all the focus is always on the ovaries and their production of the hormones, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, which are obviously very important. But what many people don't realize is it's all controlled by the brain. Mm. So we have an area in the brain called the hypothalamus. I call it the commander in chief because it's going to control everything, basically, that's produced in the body. So this um, gland or this area in the brain will produce some uh, hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone. GnRH it's called and this hormone will be sent to the pituitary and the pituitary then will produce two hormones follicle stimulating hormone FSH luteinizing hormone LH which it will then send to the ovaries stimulating them or asking them to produce the different hormones. So FSH and LH are produced every single day um, but at various times in the 28 days, there will be more or less of these hormones. Hmm. So follicle stimulating hormone, as it sounds, it's getting a follicle, getting an egg ready. That's what its major job is. Luteinizing hormone, its major job is actually ovulation. But it's also important to increase the production of testosterone. And testosterone, ladies, is a very, very important hormone. So we'll get back to that in a minute. But if we look at the 28 days and divide it up, we start with day one. So day one is looked at as being the first bleed day. So the first day of um, your bleed is also the first day of your new cycle. Um, so from day one, you go to day 28. So in day one, day one to sort of roughly five, six, seven, you, you, you'll be having your bleed and hormones like estrogen and progesterone are going to be low. But testosterone is stimulated. We produce testosterone and we produce actually lots of it, ladies. It's not, it's underestimated actually how much testosterone we really do produce. But what we do, obviously, is very quickly convert it to estrogen. So remember, you are not going to be able to produce estrogen if you don't have any testosterone. A luteinizing hormone, which is also very important for the boys, is the one is the hormone which actually increases the production of testosterone. But as I said, for us, we are going to convert it very quickly to estrogen. So in that bleed period where estrogen progesterone is low, testosterone is a little bit dominant, there can be signs and symptoms here. Uh, one of them is that we're much more stable in our mood. If you're an athlete, your personal best will be around day three or four in your cycle where you have a lot of testosterone. Mm. The negative things here could be that we get breakouts, we get uh, spots and acnes and that kind of thing. If you're unfortunately a lady who has a lot of testosterone and you get the, the hair growth, so the dark hairs, the witch hairs, then these will probably be also be dominant in these days. So there are some negative things, but your mood is stable. You're probably a little bit more powerful, a little bit more assertive. And men like this lady because she resembles in a way them. Mm, yeah. So then what happens is around day six, seven, somewhere around there, the FSH message from the brain is a little bit higher because we're now getting these eggs ready and this follicle will then start producing lots of estrogen. And estrogen increases radically and this is the time where estrogen levels become very high or can become very high. So somewhere between, between day five, six, seven and 10, 11, somewhere around there, estrogen levels radically increase. And this also affects things like your mood. You're going to you'll go from being stable, a little bit more assertive, and now you're becoming more feminine, you're feeling more sexy, you're beginning to interest, interest yourself with much more sex and things like this because the animal part of you knows that it's producing an egg or getting an egg ready. And if you're going to get this egg fertilizer, you're going to have to get some sex from somewhere, aren't you? You're going to have to get some sperm from somewhere. Yeah. 
So you're becoming more interested in that kind of thing. Mm. So then we get to about day, day 12, 13, 14, and we're going to get this ovulation. And what happens with the ovulation, estrogen radically drops, actually. But testosterone has a little bit of a peak here, okay? So we're getting this massive production of luteinizing hormone, which is going to increase testosterone, but it's going to also help us have the ovulation. So once you've had your ovulation, ladies, you've got about 36 hours to get that egg fertilized. And that's why testosterone increases radically, because that's your sex driver. So now, yes, you're feeling lovey-dovey and passionate and sexy, but now you want sex on the kitchen table. And it's going to be very quick because you know, the animal part of you knows that you've got about 36 hours. So you, you've got to get some sperm <laughs> if you're going to get that egg fertilized. So the next phase, which is then called the luteal phase. So we had the follicle, we had the bleed, we had the follicle phase, we've got the ovulation phase, and now we have the luteal phase. And what happens in that phase is very much to do with, did you have an ovulation or not? Or, and or, did the egg get fertilized? So if you have an ovulation, I'll repeat this, the estrogen levels drop radically good. Mm. If you don't have an ovulation, estrogen levels do not drop. So then you may get these estrogen dominant symptoms. So what estrogen does in that follicle phase is it transports around in the blood, it will talk to your uterine wall, activate it, you'll start making new blood, you just got rid of the old blood, it'll start activating breast tissue. So, so you're getting your body ready to be this incubator, if you like, for the next nine months. Mm. So Ovulation, estrogen drops, which is a good thing. So we don't get overactive breast tissue. We don't get too much blood being produced, et cetera, et cetera. When you have an ovulation, not only does estrogen drop, but you then, in this little sac, which is left where the egg has popped out, it now changes name, it's called the corpus luteum, and it now starts producing progesterone. So progesterone is the hormone progestation. This is the hormone which is going to keep you pregnant kind of thing, yeah? So the corpus luteum starts producing this progesterone. It will also start producing estrogen again. So that increases, but never to the levels as it does in the follicle phase. Okay, so what happens next? Did the egg get fertilized? Did the egg not get fertilized? So if the egg gets fertilized, it's going to nestle in that uterine wall and uh, the production of progesterone and estrogen will continue the next nine months. Mm -hmm. Progesterone, so to protect, so you don't have a spontaneous abortion and estrogen to make sure cell division is working effectively. So it only takes nine months and not nine years to have this baby. Mm -hmm. Very important. So if the egg doesn't get fertilized, then... A few days uh, later, you know, so maybe around day 21, 22, 23 in the cycle, the corpus luteum will start disintegrating. So the hormone levels uh, will drop. And it is the drop in the hormone levels which creates the bleed or allows the bleed to happen. The shedding of the uterine wall. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's three hormones at play and they can be all kinds of challenges there. You know, getting an ovulation, not ovulation. Why doesn't that happen? You need to look at the hormones, obviously. Is it the brain hormones? Yeah, because you get the increase in luteinizing hormone. Is it the brain hormones or is it not the brain hormones? Is there a lack of of testosterone? You know, what, why is the reason why, or what is the reason why the ovaries are not producing the hormones they should in the sequence that they should. Mm? There's lots of things that need to be looked at when you may be having difficulties getting pregnant or you're having difficulties with your cycle, you're not always having a bleed, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All of these things need to be looked at, the brain and the ovary hormones, because there can be this interplay problem, there can be production problems, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a, it's a great deal that needs to be looked at. So, but in short, your menstrual bleed time is day one to day seven, around there. Your follicle uh, maturing the egg is from day seven to day, about day 12. Your ovulation is around day 13, 14. And the luteal phase, which depends on uh, ovulation, no ovulation, uh, the egg being fertilized, not being fertilized, is somewhere between day 14 and 28. Hmm. Hey. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. As I said, I really would love the girls to learn more about this in school so they understand what's going on 
and uh, understand what a, a perfect cycle is like <laughs> so that uh, they become aware when things are changing as they already do around the age of 40 and definitely from around the age of 45, 46. Anyway, we will talk more about that in another blog, the perimenopause. Happy hormones, happy life.